My sister, Lori Vallow, murdered her children, Tylee and JJ, and buried them in a pet cemetery. And we're all trying to make sense of it. So let's talk about it. Welcome to this podcast, which we have entitled Healing With You, because Adam and I want to incorporate more of your comments in this. We have been getting so many. First of all, we're overwhelmed, both by the number and the sincerity of the comments, and we can't get to all of them as we would like to. When I say get to them, even read all of them, but the ones we read are so overwhelmingly supportive not just of me and Adam, which we appreciate. We appreciate those. We appreciate the prayers, the hugs, the love that we receive from you, but also how much you share. And people are sharing such touching um, stories, such personal stories, and Mm -hmm. we want to start incorporating that more into the podcast. Adam? We do. Um, And so Rex and I discussed that this podcast, I will kind of do more of the leading and talk about some things that I want to talk about. And then the next podcast, Rex is going to take that and do a little bit more of that. So we've agreed to that. So and I wrote some notes because when you do a podcast, by the way, Rex and I are not professional podcasters. We don't really know anything about podcasting. I think they know that by now. I don't know well, we need to say it. Well, <laughs> some people are like, oh, you guys, are, you know, our podcast. Like, we don't really know anything about podcasting. So um, I have a, a script and some things that I wanted to address and talk about. But before I do that, um, I do have, as Rex said, uh, a lot of gratitude in my heart today because of like some of the messages that we have read that have come through. I'm just blown away by it. But first, I want to start with this. Um, we are in this podcast because I went to Rex's house one day and he's we talked about writing a book together because we feel like there's so many people that need to be healed, including us. Um, so we said, let's, let's put a book together that we think that could possibly help other people. And the word help is going to come up a lot in this podcast. Cause that word help is everybody needs help. Right? So we sat there and talked about writing a book. Cause I have already re- was writing a book about my experience with Lori and my experience with what happened to me. And I was writing this whole book. And Rex is like, maybe we should collaborate because Rex has just written a book that was released not too long ago. And he's got a lot of great insights in this book that even one of the chapters, he thought about Lori's situation, why he was writing one of the chapters, which led us to believe let's do a, a collaboration and write a book together, which I love. And then he said, you know, while we're writing the book, Maybe we should do a podcast. People had mentioned that we should do a podcast. And I was like, okay, let's, I, I'm, I don't have any problems with doing a podcast. I like to think that we can, we have a lot to say. We, we can help a lot of people. Let's do this. So I started thinking about doing a podcast. And the first thing that came to my mind was we got to go talk to Sean. And now who's Sean? So we're in a podcast studio and it's in St. George. Um, not too long ago, I got a phone call when my book came out, and uh, Sean had listened to my book and called me and said, hey, you want to go have lunch? I just listened to your book, and I was like, sure, I love that. So I went to go meet Sean for lunch. We had lunch. We talked about my book, because my book is about my radio life. Sean is a radio guy. Sean is literally a genius of radio, because he can actually start a radio station by himself and put everything together, piece by piece. And Rex, you've noticed in here, whenever we come in, he's got everything that you would need. So when I came back here, he goes, you want to take a tour? And I was like, sure, let's see what you got, because he runs the, the radio station for Utah Tech. So I came in there, I was super impressed. Then I saw the podcast studio. I was like, who did this? He goes, I did. I was like, oh my gosh, this is fantastic. So when Rex asked me to do a podcast, I was like, let's let's go talk to Sean. And we came to meet Sean, right? Right. So Sean, I want to give you a shout out. Thank you to APOD. (laughs) Can you get on camera? Okay, good. I want I want to give him a, a shout out because he has done an incredible job for us. Thank you. Because you and I know nothing about this. And every time we have a question or anything, He's there, and and he's been through this whole thing. So, um, are we starting the the time or no? Or do you did you start it? 
I'm just bragging on you, and then all of a sudden we're are, we're still at 30 minutes. Yeah, I'll, I'll fix it. I'll fix it. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> all that I have to say, I'll fix it. All right, all right, good job. So, anyways, I do want to. We I have gratitude in my heart, so I do want to thank Sean for helping us do this yes. podcast. The other thing is Rex doesn't know I'm doing this, but I want to thank Rex for doing this with me. Um, and I want to go back a little bit, and you know. Explain, first of all, if you don't know who we are, my name is Adam Cox. This is Rex Connor. We started this podcast because my sister Lori, um, you know, is an, a, a, had a whole, whole situation that we've been talking about for a long time. Um, and with that situation, Rex and I have bonded over that. And I feel like him and I see eye to eye on everything that's happened. So, but before this, I want to give a background about Rex and myself. Um, when I was a little kid, I I we're going way back. Not when I was born, but I to just I'm just going to mention I'm mentioning a few things just so people can understand our relationship. Uh, when I was younger, I was like four or five. I went to a t-ball game, and I remember Uncle Rex came to pick me up and took me to Seven Eleven and got me a Slurpee, and I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. And uh, then as I was getting older, Rex left to go on a mission, and I was very upset that he was leaving to go on a mission. Well, when he came back, I was super excited that he got back from his mission two years later, not knowing that he wasn't going to spend a lot of time with me, that he was chasing girls and dating and going to college. Um, since then, Rex and I have had a really, really strong relationship, and um I just remember one of the hardest times of my life before the Lori situation. Um, uh, I had hit the 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 pinnacle of my uh, radio career, and then everything came crashing down, and it was the worst time of my life at that time. And uh, so I was thinking, you know, family came to help and all that stuff. But the one thing about Rex is during that time. He was the most consistent person that I've ever been around. And so what attracted me to one of the things I love about Rex is how consistent he is. And because I had so much inconsistency in my life that I feel like watching Rex and how consistent he is, I try to model myself after that or watch him as he does things. So when he asked that we do this together, I was like, he's the per perfect person for me to do this with. And we get along good and we joke and laugh and we play basketball together and we have a great, we have a great bond outside of this podcast. So I just wanted to give a little bit of, of background. Plus, thank you. Did my girls <clears throat> try to get you to get me to cry on camera? Is that what this was about? <laughs> no. Did you cry? Okay. Oh, uh, I, but so anyways, that's our relationship in, I, in my life, you know, I graduated from high school. I didn't, I didn't graduate from college. Rex actually graduated from college. He has a master's, he has a PhD and he was a pilot, uh, in the air force. So I try to gravitate myself to people who are much smarter than me to, study them. I have another friend named Eric who he's my life coach and I listen to things that he has to say. So uh, I try to surround myself with people where I can learn and grow and people that can help me. The word help is going to come up a lot in this podcast because I think we all need help, right? So with that being said, um, people are saying that uh, Rex and I are doing this uh, for uh, publicity or money. I got to tell you, we've lost money in podcasting. We're in the we're in the red. Well, I should say Rex is in the red uh, with podcasting. So we're not making any money podcasting. And if you've written a book before, you know there's not very much money in book either. But we would like this. Um, if there is anybody that's interested in sponsoring our podcast, so we don't have to pay out of our pocket to do a podcast. If there's anybody that would like to do that, please leave a comment and say, yeah, I'd like to sponsor yours because I've learned since we're not podcasters that people sponsor podcasts. If you want us to continue, as people had said, that may be a, a, an avenue for us if somebody out there wants to uh, do that. The other thing that Rex and I talked about is that we feel like we have life experience and We've learned a lot that we can share with other people or the word help, help other people with different things. Now, Rex is a, uh, a speaker, a pub he, he traveled, he's gone to uh, all across the world. He's gone to Dubai. 
He's, uh, he's done a lot of public speaking. He speaks at conventions and all that stuff. So I'm going to piggyback on him and say, Rex and I would like to do um, some, something to help people. And that could be speeches at a convention, at work, or a group of people that need something or looking for something. And you and I have talked about people who hit the crossroads in their life, that they need to make a huge decision. And your book is about this. That I feel like there are people, at least the comments that I've been reading on our podcast, there are people that could probably use some of our um, thing, advice or things that we've gone through that we might be able to help other people. Because I keep reading, your guys' podcast has given me hope. You guys have said certain things that made me think about something or help me with something. So this, this was our first thing when we came to do a podcast was... Who can we help? Even if it's one person. And it turned out to be we got people in 32 countries that are watching our podcast all over the world. So I would like to throw that out there, too. If there's anybody that would like to have me and Rex come to your business or your convention or whatever it is and speak, we would be honored and love to do it because I think we have some things that we could help you with or at least suggest things. Now, you're more of an expert at speaking than I am. So um, that's up there. Leave a comment if there is anybody that wants that option uh, to have us do that. And the other thing, Sean, um, you know, people want to ask us all kinds of questions. As Rex will, you know, as we go through and we read these questions, there's so many to answer. Is there a way that we could let people know that we can do something live and then let people call in or something where we can do it live so we don't have to respond to all these we could just talk to people is that would that be something you'd be interested in i'd love to yeah we can set up a uh, uh this has a facebook live function and a youtube live function okay and it also has uh, we can also take phone calls and do bluetooth and stuff like that so if you want to go down that road we, i'm sure we can okay we can do that here let us know in the comments if that's something that you would like to do because rex and i would like to you know answer as many questions as we can <clears throat> as we as we talk about these things okay Enough about all that. Good, Let, you're all full, full of surprises. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, I have so much. I have so much uh, that I wanted to get through. Um, so let's start talking about some of the comments that people have made. Um, Rex and I have been honest and open about everything that we've experienced with the Lori uh, Daybell experience, and I think because you and I were honest and and told how our side of it, how we feel, other people felt like you guys are not alone. We, or I, have had certain things happen in my life that, um, you know, are similar. Now, I never thought I would ever hear anybody say that they had anything similar to my family situation because it's such a bizarre story that... Um, I, I, I was blown away by some of these comments. And you've read, you've read a lot of these comments, too. So now that I'm old, i got to put my glasses on. Hopefully I can read some of these. Um, one of the uh, things that I'm going to talk about, and I'm not going to give people's names out because I don't know if they want me to, but um, somebody had mentioned this in one of the comments. I have experienced similar <clears throat> but without murderous conclusions um, and talked about... Um, that her sister, this person had a sister um, that was demonized and uh, called names and threatened and challenged and all kinds of things, um, and that uh, their family kind of handled it like like my family did, where um, they kind of let her do what she wanted to do without actually trying to talk it through. And I think you and I had talked about one of the things that my my missions was on doing this podcast was to help families that go through something to be able to come together and at least talk about things. Mm -hmm. And so um, somebody else had mentioned that as well, that their family uh, needed to do that as well. Um, this one says, I have a similar situation where my family is delusional and has cut off any people who question their behavior and call out for not doing the right thing. 
Um, she has children that are being affected in, in our relationship with them, and uh, it has been broken. Um, it's easy to say, I should have done this or said that. But the reality is, if you're going against them, they see you as an enemy and will cut you off, <clears throat> which is what happened to me with Lori. Right. Um, so, and there was another uh, situation where a, a lady made a comment about um, her sister was delusional um, and ended up listening to voices in her head and ended up uh, committing suicide and jumping in front of a train. And then her kids went to the husband and the husband abused the kids. So that's what she was going through. And I was reading that comment. I started feeling my, I started feeling going back to where I started feeling the feelings that I felt when I found out that Charles was killed, Tylee and JJ were killed. And I just, you know, I can, I can feel her anxiety when I was reading that comment. And then I started just thinking about there's so many people that have so many different things going on in their own lives and their own families um, that, you know, how do we help and how, what can we do to help people with decision making? Now, I know we, we're, all, we're responsible for ourselves in making our decision making. Is there anything that you would suggest, Rex, that um, would help other people, you know, deal with those kinds of things? Uh, Family-wise? Yes, and I'll reflect this from many comments we've had along those lines. It helps so much, first of all, just to have someone, and it doesn't have to be a family member, but of course family members are, are obvious options, but have someone you can talk with about it. Good grief, isn't that the biggest first thing you need? You don't know what to do with all these emotions, with this situation that you've never faced in life. We've never faced serial killers in our family. No. What? How do you do? How do you even get your arms around that? And it helped that you and I talked it through so much. My daughters and I talked it through quite a bit. That's the first thing I think anyone can do is to listen and not be the typical husband trying to fix it, but just listen and keep listening and keep listening to help someone. So that's that's great advice, and I feel like that does help to have people listen. Um, when it also comes down to, you know, your, what do you do in your life that, you know, maybe you feel like you can help? Because I know a lot of people were saying, you know, uh, Adam, you, you, you didn't, you didn't, uh, you couldn't have helped Lori. She's delusional. She did her, she was on her own path without. And so you always, as a, as a family member, you're always thinking, what could I have done to prevent it? Or what could I have done to help or what, you know, all those things go through your head. Um, so I know a lot of people are suffering with, with those kinds of things as they, you know, send in, uh, a lot of these, these comments. I will say that in the next podcast, I'm going to go into detail on what I'm about to say that I'll just address briefly. Yeah. Each person is on what I call a universally unique path in this life. Healing from a specific situation, like us healing from this Lori situation, even you and I have unique paths. Right. And I believe that Whoever gave us our nature, whether you believe it was God or nature, whatever you call it, Mm -hmm. also gave us an internal guidance system, and we have to rely on that system for our way to heal, to know who can I talk to, what resources should I use. Everyone talks about counseling. Should I do that? Those are all very personal questions, and you need to get used to to being aware of your own internal guidance system. More on that to come. Yeah, because I have a lot of questions about that because I think people hear more than just one voice or think they hear more than one voice. Mm -hmm. Um, Here's a comment that says, I agree with Adam about communicating. I mentioned that uh, in the last podcast or one of the podcasts previously that if we could have just all put our family in one room, my mom and my dad, me, Alex, Lori, and Summer. 
I feel like then Lori and Alex wouldn't be able to manipulate or um, then at least my mom and my dad and and Summer could have heard what they were saying or, or so I could have put a different spin on it. Just communicating is a is a huge part of what this person is saying. And now, so they would have heard whatever Lori and Alex right. said. It doesn't mean they come out with the truth, but the point is I would have been there. You can hold each other or attempt yeah. to hold each other. There's no guarantee, but you can attempt to hold each other accountable. And th- and that I think that's important when the com- when to talk about communicating, right? The other thing says um it's a bit I- idealistic with some people. Not everybody wants to communicate, which is very right. sad. Uh, conscience and common sense is critical. And the one thing that I was talking earlier about Rex is that I'm, I'm a, one of the things that I admire about him is common sense. And him and I both have like, you know, if that doesn't make sense, find out why. You know, and and that's a, another part of the internal system, right? It is your guidance system. Common sense has something to do with that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I, I appreciate that comment as well. Um, another comment says, Adam and Rex, it would be interesting to explore now with the power of insight um, where these feelings of disgust or uh, distrust in law enforcement. So, you know, I had mentioned earlier about Chandler Police Department, and I know everybody has their own deal. Um, and, and police officers have a, a very difficult job, and I'm not saying that. I just wish, and I, I don't want people to come down on the police either. But you know, some people are saying, you know, you got to hold people accountable and those kinds of things. And I, I, am I upset? Yes, it upset me the way it was handled. But I'm not going to blame anybody or police officers for what happened with Lori and and Charles's situation. Um, Can I add to that? Yeah. People talk, people use the phrase a lot, blood on their hands. People have blood on their hands. People have said that about you, about Chandler police, about family members. that didn't. Our belief, if I can speak for you, if not, not call it out. Our belief is Three people that we know of have blood on their hands. Right. Anyone else may have been able to do something that wasn't done. We don't, we'll never have the answer to that for sure. But there are only three people in this scenario with in blood our on their hands that have blood on their hands. I agree with that. Uh, Adam and Rex, hello. I hope you guys are doing well. Thank you for putting this together. I believe uh, that you give us hope. God bless you both. Um, this is from Donna in um, New Bedford. And the reason I read that, not to, not to you know, say we're doing a great job with this podcast, but she said that we give her hope or give people hope. I love the word hope because there was a time in my life when all this was happening and I, I felt more alone than I've ever felt in my whole life. And I, you know, hope was hard to grasp onto. But I, I, you know, hope is a huge thing for healing. It is too. So thank you for making that comment and bringing up the word hope. I love hope. I love help. Both of those words to me, a lot of us need in our lives. And that's why we're doing this. And that's why we're doing this. Yes. Right there, Donna. Thank you. Yep. Um, a person that has no conscience is a renegade. Anything goes. It is you're the conscience person. What is what do you take with that? I agree completely. I believe everyone has a conscience, but that's not a difference. That's not refuting what they're saying. Some people do not listen to their conscience, whether it's there or not. I put Lori Lori in that category, and they are renegades. They'll you can't stop them. That's mm. the only thing that holds us in check. Holds the natural part of us that wants. Ego, appetites, nothing wrong with ego and appetites. Right. But it has to be held in check with your conscience. If you aren't going to listen to that, who's going to stop you? This comment says that they seared their conscience. Our conscience is always speaking to us, but it whispers. Lori and the, th- and the three listened to their ego and suppressed their conscience, even though it was speaking. 100%. 
Um, Meaning I agree 100%. And just so another thing about um, this is that people are trying to diagnose what Lori has. Is she delusional? Does she have personality disorder? Is she a narcissist? Is like all those things. And I don't know the answer to that. And I know a lot of people feel like they do know the answer to that, which is fine. I don't have a, I don't have a preference one way or another, but I think what Rex said on the other podcast, no matter what they're diagnosed with, what they planned and what they did was just evil. And there's no other way around. There's no other excuses about it. It's just they chose to do evil with what? Greed and all the things that you mentioned, their appetite for maybe money and all the things that go along with that. So, um, sex, power over other people, money yeah. is what the prosecutors built their case on. I think that's all applicable. I think all those descriptions are applicable. In my mind, they aren't mutually exclusive. And with you, I don't know the proper, in the psychology world, the proper diagnosis name to put on or whatever. everything. Yeah. Exactly. But evil to me encompasses or overarches all of it. Yeah. So as we do this podcast and we, um, you know, we, I feel like we've given so much information about what we knew about the situation and how we think we can help with talking about it with you guys. I feel like this is like just a big group session, like a big group therapy. And Rex and I are just the, the moderators. But if you guys, if your comments come in, and we can talk about those things. I mean, I I I I feel um, gratitude that people feel like they can share what's going on in their lives. Because if you, if you think about it, we all have things that are going on in our lives. Family, everybody's got something physical. Like I got uh, type one diabetes when I was twenty two years old. Didn't expect that at all. So I've had type one diabetes for thirty years. I know a lot of people listening right now have their own physical part of their body that doesn't work as well as it should or something that's going on. So we all have to deal with that. We have to deal with um, relationships. We're all involved in relationships. And on one podcast, we will dive into relationships because, you know, again, I admire how Rex approached his uh, relationship and his marriage with Lisa. Uh, Rex and I both have been divorced. I'm still divorced. Rex has got remarried. Hopefully one day I'll be able to do this. But I think I would use your motto, and it doesn't work for everybody, but I really liked how you did that. So we could do a whole podcast on relationships, on physical body. Uh, how do you spend your time? Because time is another thing that we need to, you and I had conversations at your house about. I feel that's a huge topic of what are you doing with your time? And I feel like both of us have had enough failures in our life and, about, and, and enough success in our life that we can monitor and, you know, try to make sense of those things as well to try to help other people who are going down a path like that. And to us, this is all the same topic of healing. So we aren't saying we'll ignore the Lori situation. We'll keep going on whatever topics are important to people. You're right. But all of those topics that you mentioned to us relate to healing, and really that's what we're about. That's yeah. what we want for ourselves, and we want for anyone else that's going to be involved in this podcast and reading the book, whatever else we do. So we hope that you make a comment, what, whatever it is, um, and that you can share maybe how you healed. Because I don't think there's one way for one person. Right. You mentioned that. You mentioned like everybody's going to heal differently. So I think the more comments we get is like, hey, I had a situation and I wasn't forgiving somebody and then all of a sudden I forgave him and I was I could heal or whatever whatever it is. We would love to hear how you have been healed before with something that's going on in your life that we can share with other people. Something else I love to see in the comments is when people comment on each other's in a positive way. There are some times when it's adversarial, and they people can work that out. But yeah. When someone thanks another person for, I'm glad you made that comment. That makes such a difference to me. I love seeing that on there. Yeah. So, so you aren't waiting for us to make a comment on it. If you have something to express sincerely to another person, 
like, thank you for making that comment, or I faced that situation. Here's what I did. Please do that also. Okay. So, um, again, we're this podcast, we're just going to be a big group therapy and big hugs to everybody. Thank you for watching. Um, make comments, and we'll see you uh, next time uh, when we talk about healing again. This has been Tylee and JJ's Silver Linings Podcast. Your input is helping us make sense of this. We encourage your comments on our Facebook page or email Tylee and JJ Silver Linings at gmail.com. This has been a production from A Podcast Studio.